Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a get ready with me and we are gonna do a fall vibe get ready with me, which is really exciting. October is finally here and I have pulled all of my favorite fall pieces in front of me. So I'm gonna be using a lot of products that I really love for this time of year. And these products are things that I think about all year long and I'm like, ooh, I can't wait to use that, but I feel like they're not seasonally appropriate. So this is an exciting video because I'm gonna actually get to use all of the pieces that I look forward to using all year long. So I've got a full vibe going right now. I'm drinking my pumpkin, my at-home pumpkin spice latte. Um, I showed how I make this in my fall morning routine. I've got a pumpkin candle going back there. I'm wearing one of my favorite fall sweaters. I love this sweater. I um, got this from Michael Kors years ago and I just feel like this color and this cowl neck is like so rich and yummy. I love this piece. And I actually just put in these earrings. I just ordered these off of Amazon. These are my ears earrings and I think they're so cute and dainty. I love like wearing all of my piercings and I just love like these like cute little dainty earrings. They look so expensive but they're super affordable and I think gold jewelry with like these colors and these tones are like perfect for this time of year. So this is like a full immersive fall experience for me. I have my favorite fall makeup. I'm drinking a fall drink. I got a fall candle and I'm really excited to do this video. We're starting off with this brand new lip mask. I love Laneige lip masks. Ugh, so yummy. Um, I love Laneige. I've worked with them for a long time. This video isn't partnered or sponsored or anything, but um, Laneige is a brand that I absolutely love and these lip masks are the best. Every makeup artist I know is obsessed with this lip mask. And this scent oh, just came out. I had like ads on my Instagram popping up for um, the new Laneige fragrance like lip mask fragrances and I immediately rushed to Sephora. I was so scared it was gonna be sold out. I like went online and did an immediate order for this lip mask. Um, this is the Ginger Snap flavor. Oh my gosh, well I guess it's not flavor. It tastes the same. Ginger Snap fragrance. Ooh, so yummy. There's also a peppermint one. I love glowy skin year round. Like I always want my skin to be very like healthy and beautiful. And this primer is one of my go-tos. I probably shouldn't tell you all that because Becca Cosmetics is breaking our hearts and going extinct. But this primer is from Becca Cosmetics. It's the backlit primer and oh, I just love it. I think it makes the skin look so delicious. Look at that. Like this is before primer. This is after primer. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, I probably used too much. I also feel like this primer um, makes my makeup last a long time, which is really, really nice. A lot of primers are gimmicky, but this is a good one. Like, look at that. Beautiful. So I recently chopped my hair. So it is shorter, it's darker, and I'm on a hair care journey. I really try to be, you know, good about all my skincare and hair care, and I've always used good products, but um, I've definitely butchered my hair over the years. Y'all know. And um, I'm really excited for this like fall look. I think it's like cute, it's sassy. I do miss the blonde, I'm not gonna lie. I have like a couple little blonde pieces. I should probably pin this out of my face, huh? All right, let's get that out of my face. Now you can see my earrings on this side too. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, I hate my hair pinned back like this. Ugh. I know it's like a style right now, like people, it's just, I feel like, anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use my Smashbox primer water. I love this stuff. I feel like, I feel like this stuff kind of lost its like obsession. There was like a following for that stuff for a while, but I still like it. Okay, my skin is primed and I really want the healthy parts of my skin to shine through my makeup and the parts that are breaking out to be covered up. So I'm gonna start off with um, this foundation. It's really sheer. And then I'm gonna go in with my concealer to like, you know, perfect. I have started wearing my mask again at work. Oh my gosh. I feel like there's constantly an update like about masks, but that is what the breakouts are from. I feel like my skin was doing so well and then I had to put my mask back on and now there's more breakouts again, but it's okay. We do what we have to do, right? I live in Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah, and 
it is definitely fall here. It is so beautiful outside. This is like the best time of year. Oh my gosh. It's like this gorgeous, like crisp morning and evening where you definitely need like a jacket or a hoodie to be outside. But like during the day, it's so sunny and like the leaves are changing. So you get to be outside and enjoy being in the outdoors without like sweating your balls off. And you can like see all of the fall aspects without freezing. So uh, it's just the best time of year. I love Utah so much. I know Utah is growing like crazy. If you guys um, keep up with anything as far as like the real estate and the economy goes, like Utah's booming. Um, and I'm so lucky that I already lived here before that happened because financially it's just really difficult to get here right now unless you're coming from somewhere with a lot of money I guess because rich people are moving here right um and, but as far as like a normal Joe Schmo like myself relocating to Utah right now is is really tricky and everyone's trying to do it and it's so beautiful here and I just love living here it's like the best state ever Okay, so I did a really, really light layer of that foundation. I don't know if you could tell like how light that was, but just really lightly buffed in some coverage. And then I'm gonna go in with my under eye concealer. Um, this is the Morphe, I forget what it's called, but um, I think this is being discontinued or maybe they just had it for sale the other day because I saw it saw it really discounted online. And I was like, is that because they're taking it away? I don't know, but I love this concealer. I'm patting this in with my fingers um, just to give it a really skin-like look. Um, if you're not using a beauty blender, then I really like using my fingers because I think it just blends it in really beautifully. And I really like the way that this looks. I just painted my nails last night and I don't have any acrylics on, so this is the like real length of my nails. Um, and... I really love this color. I think it's like a really good transitional color. I used to hate colors like this because I thought they were like old lady. So maybe I'm an old lady now, but I feel like these like mauve tones are like so beautiful and transitional. My husband's birthday is October 1st. So we always kick off the fall celebrating my hubby, which is really great because we skateboard together. We hike together. We do a lot of beautiful things outside and this time of year is just like oh, the best to be outside. Um, but I love kicking off the fall season with my husband, like celebrating my husband because he's like the best sport ever and he's so embracive and immersive of the different seasons. And I used to hate anything other than summer. Like I used to feel like if it wasn't summer, then I was just waiting for it to be summer again. And he really taught me to like embrace the different seasons and like there's so much more to like do and so much more to life and just like waiting for summer to come around. I used to feel like if I didn't live in, you know, a sunshine state that like my life was going to suck <laughs> somewhere warm because I hated the cold, but now I love it. I'm going to take this J-Cat Beauty uh, foundation palette. I really use this more of like a concealer palette um, and just pick up some of the product with my fingers and add some extra coverage where I need it, specifically where that mask knee is. Ugh. I really use this foundation palette more as a concealer palette because it's pretty full coverage. I mean, most cream palettes in this form are fuller coverage, um, but I don't really like the look of cream all over the face unless you want like really, really full coverage. It's hard to show off your skin through this product. So if you're really trying to cover stuff up, a cream product is a great way to go. And I just buff it in or pat it in, I guess, with my finger. The only thing about using your fingers for makeup is they get dirty. I used to hate using my fingers because of that, but lately I just feel like, you know, you can't substitute fingers. I'm gonna go in with my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and just put this on my under eyes, very carefully, only my under eyes. And I'm gonna use a little tiny brush for this. This is like a highlight brush. This is like the same size as like the Anastasia highlight brush or Jaclyn Hill highlight brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my finger, make sure that the concealer is all the way buffed out, like no creases, no anything, because this is a thicker concealer that I have under here. So I'm gonna make sure it's perfect. And then I'm gonna immediately go in with my Laura Mercier translucent powder. 
pretty thick amount on there. Look up, 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 up. Look all the way up to the sky. That way you keep that skin spread apart, like open. <laughs> like those creases, we want them all the way open. And pat that under. Then you're gonna do the same thing on the other eye. You always wanna do one at a time. That way it gives your skin or your makeup no time to settle. It's like immediate. Because if you pat out each eye and then go in with powder after, you give the makeup an opportunity to settle or crease, and we don't want to do that. Okay, and then the only place that I now have powder is just my under eyes. That is all. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm a huge coffee drinker, you guys. I don't know how people don't drink coffee. I really don't understand. I guess the word I'm looking for is addiction, but it is what it is. As the seasons transition, um, my skin definitely freaks out. <laughs> um, it gets chilly here and um, my skin definitely has like a little bit of a shock to it. So really ensuring that I'm using products that are gonna maintain moisture, add moisture, keep things from looking chalky or cakey is really important to me. Um, I also just love glowy, healthy looking skin. And if you pile on mattifying products, then it just, it looks like makeup. It doesn't look like skin. I'm gonna be using the NARS, um, what is this? It's a sculpting stick. <laughs> um, and this bronzer is just the Laguna bronzer. NARS Laguna is like the best bronzing color. There's a million versions of the product, um, like powder, liquid, cream, whatever. But I'm using the cream and I'm gonna take my brush, this is a taper brush, see how it gets pointier and thinner at the top. Um, and I'm gonna put the bronzer directly on here. I don't like drawing on the face. I cringe every time I see people drawing on the face. Um, I just think it's really harsh and hard to, to uh, blend out. So I'm going to start back here and start applying my bronzer. Um, I love a cream bronzer. It just looks like skin. It looks, um, it adds dimension to the face without having to build on a million layers of product. Um, cause like I said, when you're layering on powder, it's going to add texture and in the fall, I wear a lot of texture in my clothes. I don't want to wear it on my face. Don't get me wrong. I'm still going to go and use powders. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't use powders, but this is just so beautiful. Do you see this? Like that, that's good. That is so pretty. There's no highlight on my skin. That glow you're seeing is just from our primer. And that bronzer just looks like, like it looks like I'm just already sculpted. Oh, so yummy. So I love fall. I love kicking off fall with my husband. Um, we always do a lot of fall festivities. We do corn mazes. We do haunted houses. Um, we have a cabin in the mountains. Um, it's a city called Fairview. It's like a tiny little mountain town. Um, and it's beautiful. We have a family cabin. It's actually my grandmother's cabin. Um, and she lets us use it. So I'm really excited to go and spend some time up there. I always get so many questions on my social media around fall time um, because people who don't live in Utah, we're like fall goals. Like people, like people travel for this kind of adventure and I live here, so very lucky. I do have some self tanner on. I pretty much always have some amount of self tanner on and very rarely my natural color because I'd hate it. <laughs> Um, but I think that Laguna compliments like the, like beautifully a tan. Like I just think it's like such a beautiful compliment. Like my neck to my cheek color here. Ooh. If y'all have bought like cream or liquid bronzers before because you see them used on social or I don't know, somebody recommends it and you're like, I want that for myself. And you've had bad experiences with them. Um, definitely try using a brush if you're not. I think a lot of people don't use brushes. They use sponges or they use their fingers or they draw directly on the face. Try this method because um, it makes a big difference. Also, if you have a tendency to um, have longevity issues with your products, like if you feel like it doesn't last throughout the day, using creams or liquids topped with powder is a really good trick for that too. I wish that you guys could be here with me, like playing with products with me, like drinking pumpkin spice lattes with me and smelling that candle behind me. Oh my gosh, it's just like so cozy in fall time in here. My heater's on too, so I can like smell the heater. You know that smell of like 
the new heater, like first time using the heater in the fall, you know what I'm talking about. I think it's actually a smell of burning dust, but it's nice. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of nose work here, just a little bit. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush and we're gonna do the same process that we've been doing, but I'm gonna go along the nose here. And I'm gonna connect my nose contour with my eyebrow, just right in there. Like this little pocket, you know, like right, not the lid, not the brow bone, but like, So this side has my nose done and this side does not. Just a side by side for you. I don't do like a huge nose contour, but I like a little shadowing. I think there's a lot of really bad nose contours on the internet. So just wanted to show you one that didn't look horrible. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of really good ones too. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not saying this is the best one, but just saying, okay. I actually took this side lower than this side. Whoops, let me fix that. It's because my lighting's better on this side. <laughs> it's because I can see this side better. The way I'm sitting, I can't see this side as well. Okay, um, cream contouring, bronzing, whatever, um, is really great if you're new to contouring too because it's not so harsh. I'm gonna do a little bit on my chin here, which I, I actually don't love this technique, but I'm just gonna do it to show you. I'm just gonna make a little face and see this little chin mark here. Just makes the lower lip look a little poutier, a little fuller. I don't have any lip injections, so, you know, any help I can take. I'm gonna use a cream blush as well. I guess, was this cream? I don't know, I guess it's more of a gel. Um, and this looks really, really dark and scary in the packaging, but I'll show you guys. It's it's not dark and scary, it's very rosy. Um, and we're gonna use the same technique, we're just gonna put it on our brush here. I'm gonna make a cute little face for y'all, a little fishy face. This is where we want our blush for fall and winter. Um, well, where I want it. <laughs> um, I love like a cute little pinky moment right here. Um, just looks like really, really healthy and I think it just accentuates the cheekbone, like the cheek pop. Um, especially in the winter because I love that kind of like uh, like cold cheeks from coming inside look. Um, as we move more into the winter, I'll actually bring that cheek closer if that's the look I'm going for. But anyway, we're just gonna pat that in. Last cream product I'm gonna use, I'm gonna apply my eye primer, and then we're done with creams. Um, this is really a great eye primer. I got it in like a BoxyCharm or something, and I freaking love it. I don't even know where it came from or how to get it again, but I'll put it down below for you guys. Um, I love this one because it's tinted, so it's almost like a concealer on the eyelids, and it's very, very, very sticky. So that's awesome for eyeshadow because it's gonna really hold on to the product for you. Especially if you have oily eyelids, this is a great trick. Um, and I like to do my eyeshadow primer before I set my face because I don't like to use any liquids or creams after I use powders. So if you noticed earlier, I did my eye, my under eye concealer and powder just to set that in place so that it wouldn't crease. Um, but outside of that, I like to do all my liquid and then follow up with all of my powder because it's really tricky to use liquids on top of powders unless they're really special products that are formulated to work that way. So a good rule of thumb is just to not do that. <laughs> just to use liquids and creams and then powders after. And when I prime my eyelids with um, a product like this that neutralizes the lid and works as kind of like an eyelid foundation, if you will, um, I use it the whole thing because I want to make sure I neutralize this area, this area. I want everything to be like beautiful and canvassed. Nothing that I've been doing or using so far in this video, you can't do like the rest of the year. Um, but these are just 
like products that I specifically love this time of year. Oh man, I love fall. I love fall makeup, I love fall fashion. I love fall clients. I think they're like willing to do more like trendy things than a lot of other clients are the rest of the year because they like really want to lean into fall, you know? People love fall. I'm only applying powder in the places that I want to be matte. So I'm being very, very selective about this. Um, I'm really only doing it here, here, and here. Um, maybe a little on the nose, depending. I mean, I don't really get shiny because I'm dry, but for some people, they get really oily, so they would probably do more than I would. Um, definitely the chin, though. Definitely the chin. Okay, and I'm gonna put this all over the eyelid. I have a lot of neighbors that really lean into the holidays and they deck out their homes and porches and everything like so early. And it kind of drives me nuts because I'm like, let's just appreciate each season. <laughs> like let's, let's wait. Um, but we're in October now, so I feel like it's appropriate to put out the Halloween stuff. And I'm excited. I need to get out all my cute Halloween stuff. If I decorate too early, I get sick of stuff. So I can't do that because I don't want to be sick of looking at my Halloween stuff by October 31st because, you know, that's too soon. I am setting my bronzer a little bit, just a little bit. Um, this is the Hula Bronzer by Benefit. This is good stuff. I'm not going in and like re-contouring or re-bronzing or reshaping. I'm not doing anything different than I already did. I'm just tapping this on top. I am gonna do some really light baking um, just underneath my bronzer here because I really like that area to look nice and clean. Not too sharp because I think sometimes people are over baking and that makes your contour look too sharp. It looks painted on. I mean, at that point, you might as well just use a stick and leave it. Um, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to have, like, too harsh of a line, like, you might as well just be drawing on your contour. Um, but I do want to just structure this a little bit. I think it's more the line. Like, I want, like, the this area to be really bright. The reason why I say light baking is because I'm not grabbing a sponge and like loading the jawline with powder. I'm really just purposefully putting powder where I need it and a little bit too much. That way it can sit on there for a second and then I can dust off the excess. I have a couple of favorite um, blushes for this time of year. I'm gonna use the Bare Minerals um, You Had Me at Merlot, <laughs> um, which looks really aggressive. It looks really scary in this pan. Um, but it's not. <laughs> We're gonna lightly, you know, light. And I'm really patting this opposed to sweeping because I want to be really intentional about the location of this cheek color. When you use bolder colors, I think you need to be a lot more intentional. If you're using uh, like a just a shimmery, glowing, you know, you just want like some sort of like beautiful wisp of color, then you can really sweep it on. But for something like this, I wanna be really, really intentional about placement. And then I'm gonna go in and just pat, just to blend it. I wanna make sure it's visible, but I don't want, you know, I don't wanna look like I got punched in the face. So pretty, I love this, I love this for fall. I'm worried it's a little too reflective in the camera. I'm gonna zoom you guys in just a little bit so you can see a little better. I think zoomed in, this might be a little more true to color. I used to always do the eyebrows at the end. And I find that doing them first allows you to really create the shape that you need with your eyeshadow. So I'm doing better. I'm ensuring that I do my eyebrows first. And I think, I think I personally have pretty good brows. Like this is after, this is before. So it's not like a huge difference. I mean, it is a difference, but I'm just saying like, I probably can tell more what I'm doing in this area than a lot of people can't. Like I, on clients, like if I have a client with really sparse brows, like I've got to fill them in first. Cause I just don't even, I can't even see what I'm working with here. I can't even see where the eyelid's going to go to without doing the brows. So that's probably why I do that on myself, but I should stop. I love haunted houses but I become a target every single time 
because I'm the most reactive person. Like I do not hide anything that I think or feel very well at all. So when I'm scared, you can tell I'm scared. When I'm, you know, like I'm very reactive. <laughs> Um, and the people at the haunted house really enjoy that. The actors and the employees, like they think that's really fun to like scare the girl, like make her run for her life. So then I become a target because it's like literally everybody knows that I'm gonna give them the response that they want. And I should learn to control that better because there's times that I, it's too much. There's times that we go to a haunted house and I'm like, I like, you know, to go and get scared, but I also don't want to be a victim of this place. So, gotta be careful. Gotta be careful with that. As much as I love a haunted house, um, I do have I do have some boundaries. I will never go to a haunted house that is hands-on. I don't know if you guys have haunted houses in your states. I know they're not everywhere, but in Utah we have a ton of them. And um hands-on means that the actors are allowed to like touch you and grab you some extreme haunted houses or if you go to like an extreme night or something like that they can literally like move you like they'll grab you and like put you tie you in a chair or like feed you food oh my god so scary <laughs> they'll like force you to eat like blood it's not really blood you know like whatever it is um i would never do that i've even been to haunted houses where like i refuse to sign the waiver or do hands-on because when you're hands-on you'll wear like a glow stick necklace or something so they know that you're someone who wants the hands-on experience i've even been to haunted houses where like i will pay the vip passes and then i'll refuse to wear the glow stick because i'm like i'm not doing that like that's not fun for me I love a jump scare. I love like a cheap thrill. I love like a ooh and then move on. But I would never let someone touch me. Um, I've been to haunted houses before that I did not sign a hands-on waiver and they will still try to separate your group. Like they'll be like, okay, the girls go down the slide and the guys go through the tunnel or whatever. And I'm like, absolutely not. Like my husband is staying here holding my hand the entire way. We are not being separated. <laughs> never go to a second location. <laughs> Let me know your take on, on haunted houses. Like, I think people are like, oh, you either love them or you don't. I'm like, no, I love them. I just don't want anyone to freaking touch me. A few years ago, I went to a haunted house actually where um, they accidentally like hit me. Um, like they were like throwing these like glow, I don't know what they're doing. I think it was like a lantern that was like hanging from the ceiling and it like swung and hit me, but I was totally fine. But they like freaked out. Like they turned the lights on, like the manager came and met with me and I was like, I'm, I'm seriously fine. Like they like, I think I had to sign something saying that I was fine so that I wouldn't be sued later or that they wouldn't be sued later. But anyway, I love a haunted house. I pulled a bunch of my favorite fall pieces. Well, specifically these two. Um, these are two really, really great palettes. I know I've used them and get ready with me's before. This is the Viseart Neutrals Matte, but I feel like it's really, really warm. There's obviously cool tones in here too. I should probably put this in my kit because I love it so much, but um, I love this. And I also grabbed the Natasha Denona Peak, which is a five pan palette. And this is so beautiful. This is like, if you're just wanting like one really quality piece for fall, this is a good one just because that orange right there. Um, I also grabbed a plummy color palette. Um, this is a color pop palette. It's called Element of Surprise. I don't know why it's called that. Um, but this is the palette. I really just grabbed this for like the bottom row here um, to play with. I'm going to start off with this color here. And I'm going to follow this shape here for my transition color. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know. You'll see in a second. Once I... <laughs> put the color there. I think I told this story last year. I don't know. Maybe I did. I'm going to tell you guys a funny story about pumpkins. So my husband, um, like I said, totally leans into everything. He's a really fun guy. Um, and I was telling him that we should go to a pumpkin patch and decorate our porch um, and like totally deck out the front porch. Um, last year I was really inspired by like all the bloggers that deck out their porch and I wanted to be like that too. So I was like, we're going to deck out the porch this year. So we go to the pumpkin patch and we're picking out pumpkins and I'm like, you know, when I was a kid, my dad would take us to the pumpkin patch and we could each pick like one, um, or even some years when my dad was stricter on money, we would only pick out one family pumpkin at the pumpkin patch. And then we would all go to like the grocery store or Walmart or whatever 
and buy a bunch more pumpkins there. But there was like one expensive pumpkin we would get the pumpkin patch and that was gonna be like our pumpkin patch experience because it was way too expensive to buy all the pumpkins at the pumpkin patch. Cause it would literally be like $300 for pumpkins. And my dad was like, this is a waste of money. We're not spending this much money on something that we're gonna put on the porch and then throw away in a couple days. And I told my husband this story and he was like, $300? He's like, nobody is spending $300 on pumpkins. Like that's not how much pumpkin patches cost. And I was like, yeah, for sure. That is how much they cost. Like this is how my family did Halloween every year. And my husband was like, that's so crazy. Like it would never cost that much. Maybe pumpkins are just really expensive in Texas. Cause I grew up in Texas. And I was like, I don't think so. I think pumpkins are just expensive. Like at pumpkin patches, like little family owned pumpkin patches. And so we proceed to pick out an entire wheelbarrow of pumpkins. And if you go to my Instagram page, you'll see a picture of my husband next to this giant wheelbarrow of like beautiful pumpkins, like these giant great pumpkins. There's like green and orange and like really beautiful. And we go to check out and it's literally $300. And my like heart like started pounding. I was like, we cannot spend $300 on pumpkins. And my husband was gonna do it. Cause he was like, this is so embarrassing. We're not gonna like not buy these pumpkins that we picked out. And I'm like panicking. And he's like, do you really not wanna get them? And I was like, I really don't wanna get them. <laughs> so we abandoned our wheelbarrow. We literally left our wheelbarrow at the pumpkin patch guys. And we went to Smith's, which is like our local grocery store here. It's like a Kroger company. And we bought our pumpkins from Smith's. <laughs> and I think it was like 40 bucks for the same amount of pumpkins. So funny, but I love that story because my husband totally didn't believe me that that's how expensive the pumpkins were at pumpkin patches. And I was totally right. So maybe that's actually what I like about the story is that I was right, but. It's so funny because we were taking pictures of the pumpkin patch. I was posting on my story. We were like so excited about all these pumpkins that we spent like an hour picking out and then we totally abandoned the pumpkins. Somebody probably found that wheelbarrow later and was like, what is this wheelbarrow of like perfect pumpkin finds? Somebody found the jackpot. I bet somebody found our stock of pumpkins and was like, wow, this is a great selection of pumpkins. I'm just gonna buy this cart. Okay, I went and grabbed this single eyeshadow because I'm high maintenance. This is like the color family I always need for my crease. And I'm just gonna put that above the crease to diffuse it. We planted trees the other day in our backyard. And it's so exciting because we have fall leaves in our backyard now. And um, we went to this tree farm and I was posting all about it on Instagram stories. and. She actually told us that this was a great time of year to plant trees because what will happen is that the tree will like hibernate and like stay in the ground all like cold and frozen over the winter. And then when like peak, like growing season, I guess, is like spring, the tree's already like established and in the ground. So as soon as like spring is here and it's ready to like do its thing, it's already established. So it can like start doing its thing as soon as the season hits. Hopefully that's true or hopefully I explained that correctly. I think that's what she said. But, um, so we just planted these trees in our backyard and it's really fun because they're, they're turning right now. So you can see them with their fall colors and I have fall leaves in my own backyard. It's so cute. I've never had fall leaves in my backyard before. My backyard was just like grass and like, I don't know, dog shit. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna stop. I have a tendency to overblend, like way overblend, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna take my highlight color. I'm gonna use this one and put this on the brow bone. This isn't like, I feel like a lot of people use the term highlight and you assume it's gonna be shimmery. Um, that's not the case with this. It's just gonna clean and polish the shape off. Can you see the difference between how like smooth that transition is here compared to here. It's a little more harsh. It's subtle, I don't know. I don't know if you can tell, I can tell. And then I always carry that color in this little section here. So I can see my nose contour and then my highlight. I'm gonna take this on this little tiny brush and pack this on the lid. And I'm gonna take it up to my natural crease. So I created a crease in through here, 
But my actual crease, when you look straight forward, you can see this section here. That is where I'm putting the color. So here's just the crease, and here's the crease and the lid. It's a very like spicy color. Very like fall spice vibes. I have this dream of throwing like a really awesome Halloween party someday. Like not quite, you know, like Jaclyn Hill Halloween party status or like Anastasia Beverly Hills Halloween party, but obviously, <laughs> but I would love to do like a really cool house party and I don't know when that's going to happen. This is not the year. Last year wasn't the year. I could shoot for next year. I don't know. I wish that Halloween was the kind of holiday like Thanksgiving where it's always on the same day of the week. Like Thanksgiving's always a Thursday, right? It's like the fourth Thursday in the month or something. Um, I wish that Halloween was just like the last Saturday of October. I hate when it falls on a weekday and like it's hard to decide what day the party's gonna be and like, I don't know, I always feel bad for parents. Like, <laughs> like parents that are trying to like have trick or treaters and they like don't know what to day to do it on because they don't want them all sugared up before they go to school the next day. So Utah has a lot of religious people who won't be comfortable celebrating a holiday on a Sunday. Um, and so as a community, a lot of communities in Utah will just do trick or treating on Saturday, but they only do that when Halloween falls on a Sunday. I don't understand why we don't just do that all the time. Cause like, why would you want your kid trick or treating on like a weekday when they have school the next day? As a non-parent, that's my, my two cents. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe other, maybe other communities do do that, but we should really align on that. Like as a country or something. I haven't decided how dramatic I want this look to be yet because the lashes are going to add a lot of drama, but it might be too top heavy if I do lashes. So I might smoke some underneath. I might not. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of this orange here, just a little bit. Like we're, we're being real gentle with the little tip and putting that straight in the crease. Okay. We're going to stop there. We're gonna stop right there. I think that's like a good amount of drama. Like it's dramatic, you know, like it's bold, but I could still wear this during the day. If I wanted to really keep going, like really take this to the next level, then I could go in with like a Merlot color, like something similar to what we used on the cheek and add that in the outer corner and make it really smoky and sexy. I could use this in the lash line, like a eyeliner this color in the lash line and make it very like ox bloody and sexual but I don't think we're gonna do that. I'm gonna curl my lashes and apply some mascara. I've been trying to use non-waterproof mascara lately. Um, this is the Dior show because I feel like I was ripping my eyelashes out every day and I just didn't need waterproof like I didn't need my makeup to be bulletproof on a daily basis and it's hard to remove. So then I felt like I was damaging my eyelashes. But the only problem with not doing waterproof mascara every day is it doesn't hold a curl as well. A trick that I like to do with lashes is to skip the eyeliner and use a black adhesive. Now you're going to need to be someone who's practiced with lashes because Clear adhesive is going to be more forgiving and if you mess up, no one will know because it'll dry clear. Um, with black adhesive, wherever you touch is going to leave eyeliner, essentially. It's going to leave black stuff. So if you use a black adhesive, it kind of acts as eyeliner and adhesive in one. Okay, the eyelashes are on. Man, I really hate putting my own lashes on. I do makeup on so many other people and I'm like so good at applying lashes, but it's so hard to apply your own lashes. I'm gonna take a black eyeliner and I'm going to tight line. So I'm just gonna smudge it up here all along the lash line. And that's really gonna mesh the eyeliner, I guess eyeliner, we used a black adhesive, but it's gonna blend that in so that you don't see any lightness 
underneath the lash band because you don't want to see any skin color between your eyeball and the eyelashes. I've heard people say that this makes them cringe, like when people will zoom in on tutorials or when I have clients watching me do this, they like cringe when they see this because it like looks so like gross, like an eyeball, I guess, but it's never bothered me. Maybe because I'm a contact wearer, but I've never been grossed out by eyes before. I am gonna smudge a little bit of shadow on the lower lash line before I do my lower mascara. I think it's just not quite, quite as, I don't know, sultry as I want. I don't wanna go smoky, but I want a little more sultry. So I'm gonna take this tone, I'm going to take this waterproof eyeshadow stick and run that on the inner lash line in that waterline. Oh yeah. That makes this green eye look so green. <laughs> when I do makeup looks and make this eye pop, it always is like so weird because this eye color has so much contrast. What is everybody's favorite fall drink? I've been getting more and more into pumpkin this year. In years past, it's been like a little too spicy for me. Um, but I'm really liking like a subtle pumpkin. From Starbucks, I've been getting the pumpkin cream cold brew. I think it's what it's called. And that is really, really yummy. But I'm not a chai girl, but I really like the pumpkin cream cold brew. And I've been using the pumpkin creamer, the Starbucks creamer that you guys saw me use in my last video. I've been using that at home. And that's really yummy. I definitely love uh, apple cider though, like a homemade apple cider or a spiced apple toddy. Ooh, my husband makes some good spiced apple toddies. Okay, let's finish off the eyes with some mascara. And I really like that smoky underneath. It's not a smoky eyeshadow, but I think that that like smudging is really, really pretty. So I'm just gonna do a final coat of mascara on my upper lashes to blend it all together. And then the lower lashes. This is really hard to do on camera. <laughs> the very last finishing touch for my face is highlighter. And I pulled a few different options today. Um, the Girl Lactic Face Glow in um, Goldie is really, really pretty. It has a shift to it. Can you see how it goes gold, pink, gold, pink? This is a really pretty option, um, but I think I'm gonna go a little more gold. Um, this is Prosecco Pop by Becca Cosmetics, which you can't get anymore, but this one's really, really good. And then this is Citrine by Jouer, which is really pretty too. So I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna use Citrine. I'm gonna take my pinky finger and just pick up a little tiny bit of that. And I'm just gonna put this right in the tear duct. Just pat it in. Press, 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 press. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of the Prosecco Pop on my cheek. The Jouer, I find it's really pretty, but it does show a little more texture on the skin. So I am gonna use the Prosecco Pop on my face, but that's just me being choosy. Um, you don't have to be that picky. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a little tiny bit because you see how little bits on there and just lightly on the high point of my cheek really really lightly I already have so many glowing products on that this honestly isn't necessary but we go over the top here before I do my lips I just want to show you guys these earrings because I think they're so cool so I only have two piercings in this ear on the lobe this one I have three, but on this one I only have two, but it looks like I have three because this earring has like a second piece to it. So it looks like multiple piercings. I think it's so cute. The last thing I wanna share with y'all today is lip colors. And I love a lot of fall lip colors. I love a bold lip color, um, but a color that I just die for this time of year is something in this color family here. I think it's so beautiful. Um, a lot of people see these colors and they think of MAC Whirl. Um, I have MAC Whirl here to show you guys a reference. This is a little more nude, a little more brownie. So here is 
Mac Whirl right there, which is beautiful, beautiful color. Um, it's a little bit more of like a raisiny neutral tone, um, but the colors that I really die for this time of year are a little bit more um, red, a little more rusty. Not quite red, but you know, rusty. Um, this is a girl act. Is this girl actic? Yes. This is demure. Demure. So pretty. Do you see how it's just a little more red than Whirl? Whirl's a little more nude. Depending on your skin tone, MAC Whirl can either be a nude or it can be like a brown. Um, with my skin tone right now, it's a little more of a, a, a taupey nude. Um, but I want something a little more warmth. Um, this color here is an oldie but a goodie. This is Maybelline. This is a drugstore option. Um, and this is called Touch of Spice. This is so pretty. When this color first came out, I worked at Sephora and girls would come in wearing this color. And I was always like, oh my God, what lip color are you wearing? That looks so good. And all the time they were like, it's Maybelline Touch of Spice. And I was like, that's so funny because we're here at this like high end makeup store and I'm dying over this Maybelline lip color. So pretty. And then the last one I'm gonna share y'all is the Sorbet lipstick from uh, Becca. Sorry to show so much Becca to y'all because it's hard to get your hands on right now, but I just want you to see this is a little bit more of a pinkier option, um, but still in that kind of color family. These are really beautiful, perfect bridal color for this time of year. Um, really good mother of the bride color. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on for you guys. I'm gonna be using the Essence Lip Liner in the color Soft Berry, which is a great, like slightly darker lip color. Um, you guys are gonna see it's so fabulous. I'm just powdering around my lips really quick. I'm just gonna eat my lips. And that just makes sure that the foundation is really perfected around my lip line. Um, if you wear a lot of lip balm, like I have been, um, then sometimes that makeup can be kind of removed in that area. And using a mattifying powder around the lips before you do your lip color will prevent feathering and spreading. So this is the Touch of Spice. It's just so beautiful. Like it's like a pinky, rosy, ready. It's really, really, really good. So here we have the finished look. Um, Touch of Spice is that third one right there. So you can kind of see the difference of it on, but I love this color family. I love this kind of look. I feel so like falled out. <laughs> I'm actually gonna spend the rest of my day cleaning up my house, getting ready for fall. I'm gonna put out some Halloween decorations and I'm probably gonna pop in Hocus Pocus while I clean out my closet because I gotta bring out the fall stuff because fall fashion is the best. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun getting ready with you and having some fall chit chat. I will make sure to leave a lot of information and links and descriptions and um, breakdowns of everything that I used today in the description bar below. So if you guys have any questions or need any references, definitely check out that box. And please leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite thing about fall is. Let me know where you live, what fall is like near you, and why you love or don't love the fall season. Let's keep the conversation going. Definitely check me out on Instagram. I will leave more social media information, and I will see y'all in a later video. Mwah!